Hello and welcome to Fair Rugby on Fair Sports and some interesting news off the back of a pretty sensational weekend of semi-final rugby. And that is the whole controversy surrounding Bongi in Banambi, uh, which has been basically the talk of the time, which is a bit it's sad, you know, off the back of a very an epic, regardless of whether you're on the losing side, winning side, regardless of whether you think that last scrum penalty should have been a scrum penalty and all the various contri- controversial moments within the game. It was a great semi-final. It really was. Uh, and I think if you couldn't enjoy that, then I don't think you could enjoy rugby, really, because it, it was everything a semi-final should be. It ebbed, it flowed, it was in the balance. Yes, it might not have always been the most exciting rugby. It was incredibly tough conditions. It was very wet uh, and a very hostile environment, for example. Um, and it was two teams trying to sort of uh, counteract each other. So that always doesn't lead to the, the most, you know, exhilarating and, and open rugby and to be honest I don't, I don't really need that in a in a semi-final and a final you know these are not playoff games they're not about playing the game the way it's supposed to be and all that sort of thing it's about winning at the end of the day and england deployed a game plan that was set to try and win and it almost did that and uh, the box there needs to try and change their game plan in, in in conditions which didn't really suit the way that they, they would like to have played and uh, as a result we got a, i got a bit of a strange sort of uh game but in the aftermath there was an accusation that came out from um Tom Curry, uh, where he has accused Springbok hooker um, and um, often on-field cap towards the end of the games, Bongi Benambi, of calling him, uh, I'm not going to mention it, um, it is the C-word, a white C-word, and um, you went to the, uh, and this stems from during the game, where he walked up to the referee, and this was picked up on the ref mic, saying, sir, sir, if their hook, hooker calls me a white C, what do I do? Curry asked, of which uh, Ben O'Keefe replied, nothing please, and then he said, I will be on it. Um, although we're not sure if he's talking about, you know, speaking to Bongi Minami or whatever, but that is what we heard on the uh, ref mic. Now, after the game, apparently uh, Bongi Minambi slapped Tom Curry's hand away and refused to shake his hand after the game. Um, I actually didn't see it, so I cannot confirm or deny whether this actually was the case or whether this did happen. Um, but Tom Curry was then asked about it, and he basically said that he there was a, something said, he said, but he wasn't going to reveal what it was. Um, he said, yeah, literally, they literally asked, he said, um, yeah, he says it does not need to be talked about. Um, so this has now been, uh, blowing up, obviously. And there's been a lot of different reaction from the different sort of sides. And it's been very interesting to see. Now, one thing I would say is that I think that this is a pretty sensitive topic, a pretty sensitive incident, if it did occur. And what I think you need, we need to be careful about is making assumptions about what actually happened trying to justify what allegedly happened or or trying to, you know, start to draw in court to the player for, for what allegedly happened when we don't know what happened. That's been the biggest thing, is that we cannot pick up where the incident took up. We don't have any evidence about it. We don't have any anything more than just that sentence he said to Ben O'Keefe. Since then, Tom Curry said he doesn't want to talk about it. And when Steve Borthby was asked about it, he said the following. He said, the situation around that is that I'm not going to comment on anything regarding the incident. So that's all we know. But SA Rugby have acknowledged it. And um, they have said that they will be investigating the potential racial slur. And um, the statement from SA Rugby yesterday said the following. Um, it said... Here we are. Um, they told apparently 365.com. Uh, we are aware of the allegation, which we, are take, which we take very seriously. We are reviewing the available evidence. We will engage with Bongi. If anything is found, substantiate the claim. Uh, on Sunday, Dion F- and David was asked where is about the incident, and he said, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware of any comment. I'm unsure what the comment was or when it was said. I don't know. In a virtual meeting on Sunday, C. Borthwick also dismissed the question with a no comment straight. He said, I'm not going to comment on that issue. Um, so... There's not a lot that we know, and not a lot that's actually being said about the instance. So this is why I would caution, I would advise caution with, you know, a lot of South Africans are coming out and saying, no, it was a lost in translation thing. He was saying this, which might have sound like this, and this is a very common thing. A lot of people say that, you know, South Africans don't really use that word a lot, so it's very unlikely that he used it. Uh, a lot of English fans saying he needs to get along bad, for example. A lot of people saying there's no place for it in the game. My biggest thing would be to advise caution with regards to commenting on what we don't know. You know, and I'm not saying don't talk about, I'm not saying don't talk about, you know, the allegations, 
But I think it's a dangerous road on both sides. So first of all, you know, demand, ban, Sean Court to dismiss him as a player when you don't know the facts. Same thing. Don't try and justify the actions when you don't know the facts. You know, we can we can make assumptions and sit there say, oh, well, this, you know, logically, this could have been the case. And maybe it is the case. But if you don't know, you don't know. What I will say, though, is that apparently, according to the Telegraph, England are not going to be lodging an official complaint. So they have up until today to lodge an official complaint with World Rugby. Now, the Telegraph um, understands, it says as follows, it says the Telegraph Sport understands that England will not lodge a complaint with World Rugby regarding the incident due to a lack of corroborating evidence to support Curry's claim. And then saying this in turn would re could reduce the likelihood of a World Rugby investigation. So that's been the big thing at the end of the day, is that we're now sort of sitting in limbo waiting, well, are they investigating, are they not investigating? Now, first of all, if you were to get a bad, absolute disaster for Sadafi, he's been one of our best players this tournament, it would also suddenly mean that Dion Fury and Mark of the would be our only two hookers left in the squad. So it's it's a very worrying few days we have ahead of us. And and just as usual, just the last thing we needed right now going into into a game on Sunday, uh, Saturday, a game as big as this, you know, a final where suddenly we're worrying, well, maybe we might lose after, you know, we might lose our off and on field captain towards the end of the game. You know, is he going to be in trouble? Is he not going to be in trouble? Could this derail the preparation? So it's the last bit of noise and stuff that you need. It really is. Um, but the main thing is that nothing is confirmed and we actually don't even know if it's going to be investigated or whether the ban is on it. So at this stage, it sounds like anyone will not be lodging a complaint um, because there's no evidence regarding that. Um, it's interesting, that, you know, when they're saying that there's no evidence that they know that already, whether they managed to basically review the game, look at the instance, see if there is, you know, ref mics, on-field mics and that there aren't. Um, uh, and basically saying, right, well, we won't actually be able to prove it, so there's no point in doing it. Um, or whether they, 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 they're now acknowledging that there was potentially a, a, a mistranslation or, or, or you know, a, a misconception around it. So that is the current situation. We will update you as things uh, progress and as things do change and when we get official confirmation that there is an investigation, it's not an investigation. So at the moment we do kind of sit in a little bit of limbo. We, I really hope that nothing really happens um, and that if there wasn't an incident, um, that's not to say I'm, not, I'm hoping that nothing happens because I don't want... Um, and it's not going to be swept under the rug. You know, if something did genuinely happen and there is a massive issue, then we need to look at it because, you know, we can't just dismiss it as South Africans and say, oh, well, it doesn't matter, you know, in the heat of the moment. You know, we do need to um, hold our players accountable um, if, if, they are, if they have transgressed. So let's wait and find out exactly what happened and let's go from there. Um, hopefully it was all a, mis a misunderstanding and that nothing really did happen. That was really that sort of, um, that had that sort of intent. Um, and, and we can kind of move on. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steven. And I'll chat to you soon.